Good evening. I will now call to order the Metropolitan and Economic Development Committee to order from Monday, August 22nd. We'll begin with introductions starting to my, oh, the first row, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Michael Paul Hart, District 18. Thank you, Madam Chair. Brian Mowry, District 25. Thank you, Madam Chair. Keith Potts, District 2, Washington Township. Thank you, Madam Chair. Kristen Jones, District 16. Thank you, Madam Chair. Councilor Jared Evans, representing District 22. Good evening. David Ray, District 19 on the east side. Good evening. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Councilor Lakeisha Jackson, District 14, representing Lawrence and Warren Townships on the far east side. Good evening. Leroy Robinson, representing District 1. Thank you, Madam Chair. Zach Adamson, District 17, the near north, near east, and near southeast side of downtown. Thank you, Councilors. And I'm Maggie Lewis, District 10. Tonight we are having um, budget hearings. The first item on our agenda is the Marion County Recorder's Office. Is your mic on? I apologize. You may need to. Nope. Thank you. Uh, do I have to start over? No. Okay. Uh, well, the recorder's office, as I'm sure you remember uh, from the seven times I've been here before, is uh, responsible for maintaining property record, records such as deeds and mortgages. And those documents make up approximately 82% of the documents that we receive every year. And uh, unless you've been in a bubble, uh, we all know that interest rates are rising and the housing market is cooling. And our document volume is returning to stable levels compared to the last two years. The decrease in volume correlates, unfortunately, to a decrease in revenue. Uh, we've highlighted the three largest funds for which we collect revenue from our fees. And you can see uh, on that, uh, those arrows are going in one direction pretty much. And um, they are the projected decrease in revenue for this year and next compared to our, the high from 2021, the 10 year high. Uh, the next slide shows a breakdown in percentage of the revenue that we collect, and uh, as you can see, more than a third of revenue collections, and I think the controller will like this, go to the county general fund. Uh, the next slide shows that uh, our 2023 budget, which is for the incoming recorder, uh, is consistent with previous years. And as a, as a reminder, we rely solely on the fees we collect to operate our office. Uh, there are no general fund dollars used to uh, pay, pay for the paper clips and staples and have you. Um, and then the expenses by character. We do have some modest budget increases in characters one and three, you can see. Um, and that's primarily due to increases in employee benefit costs and chargebacks. Uh, we have done our best to work with the city to trim our budget to absorb the increases. We know everybody's got to uh, put another notch in their belt, or at least try. Uh, when we talk about budgeting for equity, uh, I thank the council for their leadership that you've shown in directing each department to examine our operations through this lens. The implementation of the compensation study uh, has helped us recruit new staff members this year. And we've created a new position that focuses on uh, assisting customers who visit our office, and we found somebody who is very thankfully bilingual. Uh, there are a number of people who visit our office who need a little bit extra help uh, because 
this is not something that they've done before, transferring property from one family member to another, or and it's complicated. It should be complicated, and it, it definitely is. So uh, we, we want someone to be able to help, not give advice, but to walk someone through the steps to show them that it is possible that they are able to do this on their own. Um, and since this is my last term as recorder, and a new administration, as I said earlier, is going to take office in January, we've crafted our 2023 budget to align with OFM's goals while providing flexibility for the incoming administration to establish their own goals next year. Uh, and additionally, the recorder's perpetuation fund, which is how we fund, how, where all of the money comes from, uh, now has ample reserves uh, enabling the next recorder to use those funds. We've increased, I think, threefold since we came in. Um, so they can do that as they see fit. As we've indicated previously, the one of the challenges that our office faces is the size and the scope in which we operate. Uh, for example, in comparison to other agencies, we have relatively few staff members and that correlates into fewer advancement opportunities. Uh, not, not everybody can, can be a supervisor or a team lead. Additionally, we have few contracting and purchasing opportunities, uh, though we do, uh, when, when we buy um, you know, the, the office widgets, we try to uh, do that through the services that we have through OFM. Um, and we also have limited programming to engage within our community. Uh, though we've created flyers to help, some people like to interact uh, verbally and others like to read something. Some like, they want it all. They want to be told and they want to be able to read it later on. So uh, we have done that. We've got a social media presence as well as promoting um, a program, as it were, called Property Fraud Alert which if uh, you have not signed up through my harping all these years, do it now, because property fraud is on the rise. And it allows uh, property owners to be notified when anything happens with their property. As counselors, you've probably heard a lot of about um, liens, like tall grass liens. Uh, that gets those get recorded. And if you're away in a nursing home or something and you're only getting your mail forwarded to you, and you have uh, somebody who's supposed to be mowing your grass, but they go out of business or, well, let's just say go out of business, and they don't do it, you don't know that your grass isn't being mowed, and you get a, a fine by the city, you won't know about it unless you have property fraud alert and you'll be notified immediately and you can rectify it. So that's, that's a, an important program that we have for homeowners. And um, that's it. We We... It, it has been an honor and a privilege, and uh, we're happy to answer any questions you might have about uh, the recorder's office or our budget. Thank you so much for your presentation. Are there questions, comments? Councilor Evans. Thank you, Leader Lewis. Um, I just want to take the opportunity to thank you and Chris. Your guys' office has always been very responsive. I know it's rare to get a lot of questions, but it seems like I'm always getting questions. I'm like, I think this is with the recorder's office about HOAs and things of that nature, and you two have helped out tremendously, so I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Potts. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was uh, pretty much going to say the same thing. Just wanted to thank you for your service, Madam Recorder, and for your years of service as well. Chris Becker, thank you. Additional questions from counselors? Madam Clerk, if you would read this statement, I'll open it up to folks in the audience. Um, sorry, Madam Chair, I can't seem to locate the statement right now, but um, give me one second. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is a presentation from the Marion County Surveyor's Office. Thank you, Madam 
Chair. My name is Deborah Oh, I also want to thank Kim Clark, the OFM, for helping with this budget. And Please make sure your microphone is on. Is your microphone on? Oh. Yeah, thank the you. light's on now. No worries. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, and I also want to thank Ken Clark with OFM helping uh, put together the needs of the surveyor's office and helping with the budget. Mine as well will be short. My total budget is $940,538, with 89% of that coming from the surveyor's perpetuation fund, 9% of the general fund, and 2% out of the elected official training fund. Character one, salaries, compensation, benefits, $735,527 with 89% of the perpetuation fund and 11% of the county general. Character two, supplies, is $24,350 with 78% of the surveyor's perpetuation fund and 22% out of the county general fund. Character three, contractual spending, $168,775 88% out of the surveyor's perpetuation fund and 12% out of the elected official training fund, mainly going for higher education. Character four, capital assets, $11,887, 100% out of the surveyor's perpetuation fund. Employee investments, 86% of our field employees have had no surveying experience before employment in the county surveyor's office. We hire train and they become top-notch field technicians. Over the years, we have lost several employees to the private sector because they can afford higher wages. The higher education and longevity program that I had started called HELP is a partnership between the surveyor's office, Ask Me Council 962, Local Union 827, Vincennes University, and soon to be Martin University earning a bachelor's degree in land surveying without spending general fund resources. The HELP program will ensure longevity with county union employment while on a career path of land surveying. The HELP program is an investment to empower our employees to become professionals of tomorrow while having long-term employment. Diversity business partners, Road safety supplies and apparel are mainly our purchases from XPE vendors, and we are continually looking for opportunities for businesses and XPEs that can accommodate our needs for the surveying Pacific fields. Unfortunately, there aren't very many, and I do a lot of talking to try to encourage uh, new vendors. Partnerships, as you see, we have a uh, union partnership with Ask Me, Vincent's and Martin University, the federal government on the GPS and benchmarkers and the GLO surveys they asked us to do. The state of Indiana on the Alcohol Tobacco Commission for the ATC alcohol forms. The county sh uh, sheriff's office and special ops for the Jerome assistance. And the city of Indianapolis Department of Public Works, Department of Business and Neighborhood Services, which I'm sure everyone in your position have had your constituents come to you and they went to BNS and BNS has came to me. And I'm, I'm honored to do it. I'm just saying that's where most of our work is from. And offices of minority and women business uh, development. Achievements, we have decreased the general fund spending by 7% from 2022 while absorbing 23% increases of health insurance and controlled expenses to help the higher education longevity program. The 13th consecutive year that we have achieved our state mandate 5% perpetuation corners. And currently, a current employee was a summer intern for his last two years of high school and then upon graduating, he became a full-time surveying tech while attending college. He is currently in his junior year under a 529 savings plan. He and his family have decided to change his degree to land survey. Very proud of that. Challenges is retaining experience and knowledge staff, road and bridge infrastructure, and increased requests from business and neighborhood services, which is good, that means growth. You know, that's new sidewalks, that's new streets, that's repaving, that's good. Um, current staffing, uh, the breakdown on um, total breakdown of, of race, gender, manager, field supervisors, managers and field supervisors. Um, as you can see from this, there is only 12 employees for the countywide office that I have. 
And the reason why Martin University and I are working together is because nobody realizes to go into the career of land surveying. And it is, a it's a six-figure job in the private sector. But nobody thinks of that in school. So we're working together. Um, Vincent's is one of the best in the state of Indiana, besides Purdue. But um, we don't have one here in Marion County that can offer that. And it's, it's a hybrid learning. So they're learning a lot online and only one Saturday have to travel to, to school. So we are working very hard to make this more competitive to people that have never even thought of it. And then my organizational chart, like I said, there's uh, not very many of us, so these lines cross over all over because we help each other lift up in our jobs. And I'm sorry, I did not introduce my CFO. This is Melinda Pearson that has helped with this uh, budget for the last two, two years. If anybody has any questions of me, I'd be honored to answer any. Thank you so much for your presentation. Questions, comments from Councilor? Anyone in the audience wishes to speak to their presentation? Well, you did an amazing job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the last item on our agenda is the Marion County Assessor's Office. Mic on. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Joseph O'Connor. I am here to present the 2023 budget for the Marion County Assessor's Office. Uh, with me here today is my Director of Administration, CFO Teresa Bates, also my Director of Data, Ryan Donahue and my Director of Assessment, Gay Deaton. The first slide just shows our uh, mission statement and vision and values. I'm not gonna read all of this, but um, I think we do look to this as a guidepost in how we set policies in the office as far as retention and education for our employees, as well as uh, how we uh, handle the public um, with dignity, respect, and compassion. Our next slide shows the uh, office structure. Uh, the real estate division is our largest division uh, with the most employees. Um, next is the uh, data division, uh, which in Marion County, it's unique. Uh, in other counties in Indiana, the auditor does all of the conveyance documents. In Marion County, it's the assessor's job, so we see 30 to 40,000 documents coming through our office each year for deeds as well as sales disclosures. Um, and then we have administration and personal property, which is uh, anything that's not real estate in Indiana. Uh, if you're a business, chairs, desks, computers are all personal property, and it is a self-filing report that you must report to the assessor's office annually. This next chart shows our uh, org chart, um, and we have 94 full-time employees currently. And it shows I do not have a chief deputy, so the people I introduce are uh, on the same line as directors, so they all uh, are equal directors within the office. Just to go through some of our uh, accomplishments, the commercial industrial appeals are now up to date. Um, as you may have known from recent or, uh, prior presentations, we have been up to date with residential appeals for some time now. We are now 80% uh, of all of our 2021-2022 appeals have been finalized or reviewed for the commercial. We also have uh, completed all of our um, statutory deadlines as far as cycl cyclical reassessment. Um, we had a new sales disclosure implementation system. The state did away with the free one that was they were housing, and so we had to scramble and come up with our own. 
Uh, we certified our gross AV on time. Um, so, some of our projects that we uh, look to do is uh, some of our biggest needs are going to be appraisal needs as well as we have hired outside counsel in a case. Um, and so <clears throat> we are constantly dealing with uh, mostly all commercial appeals that file and go on beyond the county level into more of a courtroom setting. So at the Indiana Board of Tax Review or the Indiana Tax Court, uh, or we even have a case petitioned at the Indiana Supreme Court. So there are a lot of, uh, a lot of due process in the appeals world. Um, it, it goes from uh, preliminary conferences with people on staff to a local board, which is the Property Tax Assessment Board of Appeals. Um, if the petitioner doesn't like that, they can go on to the Indiana Board of Tax Review at the state, and then the actual tax court in front of the tax court judge, and then finally the Indiana Supreme Court. So we have cases in all of those, and it's, some, it's a trying to try and uh, get evidence to present, as well as we've learned um, sometimes it's a need to hire outside counsel to basically combat the fire the firepower of these larger law firms to present the evidence so those are some challenges um, we, we plan to add more online services um, to myindy.gov and <clears throat> let's see. <coughs> getting on to our fun breakdown we have uh, the county general, the reassessment, the sales disclosure, the endorsement fee. And as, I, as you can see, all of those, um, we have uh, a variance of minus 24,000 in county general, uh, picking up a little more in reassessment. Our sales disclosure fund is tied to the uh, sales disclosure fee that is filed within the assessor's office, um, as well as the endorsement fee that is filed. So that is all dependent on uh, how many transactions are filed. Uh, the recorder spoke to the number of transactions that come through her office. They c mostly coincide with our office, so any conveyance document that needs to be recorded uh, usually must go before the, or must go in to the county assessor's office um, to either file a sales disclosure or some, some transactions are exempt, but they will need a stamp to go ahead and file that on at the recorder. So this next uh, slide shows our budget comparison by character. Um, we had a slight increase in character one as well as character two. The largest we've seen um, on our budget is for the character three and that's mainly due to inflationary uh, expenses uh, for next year in terms of uh, just things that we have to buy on an annual basis uh, in terms of stamps and you know, other items, uh, rent, OCC, we had some chargebacks go up from ISA. So basically all just inflationary uh, increases for character three. Some of our efficiencies um, is we, uh, <clears throat> we try to use, utilize the technology in the field. When I first started or was first selected, I think we had around 115 employees. We're now down to 94. We can't do that without technology. Um, we have less need for boots on the ground and we invest more money in technology where our appraiser or assessors can do a desktop review and that saves us on <clears throat> gas, obviously, and sending our folks out in the field. Uh, we try and do, we, a lot, our staff, most of our staff in the real estate division either need to be a level two or a level three. The level three is a very time consuming, um, multiple classes that are week long, and then to, once you achieve that, there is continuing education hours that are needed. Uh, we've set up our own, uh, we call it Assessor University to save cost on continuing education hours. And so we will host, uh, we'll call in speakers and some people on our staff are uh, certified to teach. So we'll, 
we'll call in teachers um, and get a group in the room and get free, basically free uh, continuing education hours for our staff so that they don't, uh, so that they can retain their levels. <clears throat> On to budgeting for equity. Um, I think some of our areas of achievement uh, in terms of just meeting with neighborhood groups, um, gentrification I know has been a big issue and we try and use our policies to uh, not inflate gentrification or at least keep keep the assessment in line with uh, you know when houses sell they're usually at the top end of the the condition market so someone's usually got those houses ready for sell for sale and I, in a lot of our neighborhoods we'll see these huge exorbitant prices that uh, 10 years ago, you know, were a fraction of that, and now we see prices over 300 and 400,000. So we have policies in place to not, not hit the home that is not a $400,000 house. Um, I mean, obviously the prices have risen, the, the, the tide has risen, but we take great steps in ensuring that we don't overassess those people that have not really uh, got their home in a Tip top shape for 400,000. So, those are some of the things we've done for the um, gentrification issue. We also uh, utilize appeals data and reassessment to improve neighborhood delineation. So, in our in our work, we we mass appraise. So, <clears throat> we define a neighborhood, and then we cap we collect all the sales in that neighborhood, and then we come up with a trending factor. And every home in that neighborhood or business gets the same factor. Um, we have a homeowner's information packet to try and get as much transparency and uh, dialogue from our homeowners uh, so that we can accurately assess their property. Like I said before, we, we're always trying to increase online services. Um, Some of our areas of achievement for equity, our overall employment is 60% minority or fe minority female. Uh, management, 66% minority female. Uh, we have equity of pay across races and gender. We have opportunities co for career advancement. We have a huge, uh, or we, we pride ourselves on pr promoting from within. Um, and so we had a large number of our managers or people that have, uh, that are in higher jobs mostly have been promoted within the assessor's office. <clears throat> we have um, continuing education, voluntary overtime, and we allow uh, telework in our office as a policy. Opportunities for improvement, we, we will work with HR to ensure overall staff align with population demographics and coordinate with other agencies for the job fair. Uh, spending, some of our challenges are we just have a limited uh, opportunity to engage with XBEs, just um, being in the city county building, um, a lot of our services we don't, we, we don't have the opportunity. Um, we do see personal services and appraisals, um, which we've tried, as well as uh, law firms. We do have a couple um, satellite offices um, with cleaning contracts. So we did have a vendor that went off the XBE list. We immediately terminated that and went to look for a new XBE vendor. So we, in areas where we do have a opportunity to go outside and d find an XBE, we do. Um, we just have very limited options. Potential for improvement work with OM or uh, Office of Minority and Women's Business Development to ensure qualified vendors receive equal opportunity. Uh, we'll build on our improvement from 2022 to 2023. That's all I had tonight for the uh, budget presentation, and I'd be honored to answer any questions for you. Thank you so much for your presentation. Councillor Evans. Thank you, Leader Lewis. Uh, just one question. So, when you were talking about the process and how you um, determine the assessed value of properties, particularly homes. Is that process done in a way, does that protect us from discrimination? And I, I specifically asked that because <clears throat> yesterday I was reading um, a, a snippet of an article from the New York Times about a black professor who put his home up for sale 
and he thought that the assessments were coming in low and it was coming in at about 400,000. So he went back into his home, changed everything, took out anything that would make him, that would make people know that he was black. And he brought in his white uh, professor friends to come in and the assessment went up to 700,000 something dollars. And so I'm wondering when we're doing this process, are we doing it in a way that we're not being a part of this, you know, 21st century redlining and uh, discrimination? Yeah, I, I can assure you we are not doing that. Um, and just the pro how the, it kind of in a nutshell, or uh, assessing 101, we, you know, we every year we do a quarter of the county, which is about 88,000 parcels. So we do what's called cycl cyclical reassessment. A quarter of the parcels every year are assessed, um, and, and in four years we complete the county. Um, and so we do. Um, we do a lot of desktop review, uh, delineate neighborhoods, but we don't ever go in houses. Uh, I mean, we do when we get the opportunity, but we're mass appraising. So we're using statistics and sales um, and tweaking the characteristics when we do cyclical reassessment. By what I mean is, you know, if, if we send people out or do desktop review and find mistakes, like a deck that shouldn't have been, or that's not there that we have there, or a garage that's torn down, or whatever, that's what we're looking for um, to get the physical characteristic, characteristics of that home so that when the sales occur, we see a true representation of that sale in the assessment so that we can apply the factor to every home in that neighborhood. So every home in that neighborhood is rising at the same level um, or falling um, if the factor falls. You know, it's just when we're tweaking the assessment on objective issues with is there a basement or not? Is there a garage? Um, and so, uh, in, so I can assure you we are not doing bad practices uh, in that regard. Councilor Potts. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Assessor, for your uh, presentation. The 94 full-time employees that you have, are those spots or are those actual employees who are working day to day? Those are spots. And what rate uh, are those employees, those positions filled currently? What are we doing? I think we have 17 open. 17. We have 17 open vacant spots at, at the moment. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Vice President Adamson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, two things, real quick. I saw the same article that uh, Councillor Evans was talking about. I think that the assessors that go out and make those assessments are the ones hired privately by the banks when they're giving out loans and things to get. Um, and assess value so they know how much to value the house for, uh, or to when they're going to sell it, so they get uh, get paid for that. Um, not necessarily the county assessors. I know the county assessors often much less anyway for assessment value than than resale value or sale value. Um, I would like to ask about um, uh, the deductions for solar panels. Um, when those, um, get, so I had solar panels put on my house a year ago and I anticipated this year my property taxes would go down because of that deduction and they actually went up much higher and I'm just curious how does one find out if that deduction is being applied or not yeah I'll find out it's actually the auditor's jurisdiction is all the deductions but is it a uh, in there there in the, I, I know just from you know working around it enough that uh, there was, is there geothermal and solar? I, I, there has to be like a, a certain threshold of, of power, or how it's utilized, but I, I'm, I, I can find that answer, but I don't know the answer off the top of my head. If you could find out, that'd be great, or I could call the assessor's office. Or the I'll find office. out and email or text it to you. That'd be great, thank you. Sure. Additional questions, comments from counselors? Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak to the presentation? Thank you so much for your presentation. Is there any other business before this body? Madam, uh, Councilor Jackson. I move to adjourn. We are adjourned. <laughs>